Hey everyone, how's it going? So in Godzilla King of the Monsters, one of the best moments was the shared kind of one-on-one -on -one scene between Dr. Serizawa and Godzilla before Dr. Serizawa detonated the nuclear device which healed and upgraded Godzilla's power. And while it did that good stuff, which you know, for the sake of the movie, it's good that happened, it was unfortunate because it destroyed the location Godzilla was resting at, which for all intents and purposes, was the closest we've seen to Godzilla having a home. And while exploring this underwater kingdom, it had ruins depicting not only titans such as Godzilla, but also human civilization interacting with him as well. And this location, while never officially named or officially revealed the location of, it seems like it might have been in the Atlantic Ocean just because it was accessed through the Hollow Earth Vortex located in Bermuda. Now, when the Monarch team was observing the ancient carvings and writings on the various ruins, it's noteworthy how similar these were to various civilizations associated with classical antiquity, and this includes civilizations such as ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And in the spirit of these type of civilizations, I can't help but think about how the fictional underwater city of Atlantis may be incorporated into the MonsterVerse. Now, a version of Atlantis has appeared in the Mothra film series from the 1990s, but most people probably immediately went to connect this underwater city with the Atlantis from the Gamera franchise. Now, Gamera isn't a Toho property, but the character has been teased to get a franchise makeover ever since the 2015 New York Comic Con footage came out. And there was also a recent concept art release for Godzilla King of the Monsters, which showcased Gigan, Kamonga, and maybe Gamera as well. Now it's hard to tell for certain if it's Gamera or another turtle-like monster from Toho, which there is one which I just will not pronounce the name of, starts with a K, because every time I accidentally mispronounce the name, you guys just come at me strong. So to avoid that, I'm just going to skip over that. But the reason why most likely it is Gamera is because when you look at the back spikes, the back spikes for Gamera are usually facing downwards just like the creature in the concept art versus the other turtle-like kaiju from the Toho properties which has the spikes going upward. So because of that, it does seem likely that the concept art was referring to Gamera after all, and it's really interesting that the writers of the film would maybe make an intentional effort to introduce a concept such as Atlantis considering the implications that introducing Atlantis would bring about, especially if you're also going to be introducing in the future Gamera. Now it's also really interesting because they use it as Godzilla's home, so I even saw people online wondering if this version of Godzilla is maybe a creation of Atlantis like Gamera was in his series. I don't believe that at all, I do not subscribe to that theory personally even though you could use that as an explanation of some sort to why Godzilla is so much more powerful than the other titans. If we look at other Toho creatures and fictional locations, we are reminded about Manda, the sea dragon that guards the underwater kingdom of Mu. And unlike Atlantis, Mu is actually located in the Pacific Ocean, not Atlantic Ocean, although their cities do have relatively similar architecture, except for that Mu is a lot closer to ancient Egyptian architecture than it is ancient Rome or ancient Greece architecture even though I have an understanding that they're all overall rather similar to a certain extent. Now because of this, it's very possible that the underwater kingdom in Godzilla King of the Monsters is an amalgamation of both Atlantis and Mu considering it's also a very debatable location with how the Hollow Earth Tunnels works. Like technically, based on how they're saying Godzilla would appear one place and reappear vastly far away, it's very possible that in that vortex, you, uh, you enter from the Atlantic Ocean, but you come out in the Pacific Ocean. Regardless of that, it's just really important to note that Godzilla's relationship with humanity was one so strong they built him a resting area. And this also signals just how respected Godzilla was by ancient humanity along with how certain statues and wall paintings tease him almost being a deity to them, which would explain kind of the worship-like temple, I guess, outlines that Godzilla was resting on. So hopefully this could be explored in either Godzilla vs Kong or a future MonsterVerse sequel if they do continue the franchise based on the kind of shaky stuff being reported right now about it. Similarly Godzilla, Kong was also worshipped by humans on Skull Island so it would be really cool to see if maybe we get more of a history on that human worship of the Titans when we get to that next installment in the MonsterVerse franchise. But comment below your guys thoughts. Do you think it was Atlantis? Do you think it wasn't Atlantis? And if it was Atlantis, how would you like to see this reveal expanded upon in future MonsterVerse installments? 
I mean, I don't think it's too crazy at this point. Ghidorah is technically extraterrestrial. He's an alien. So if we're getting aliens in the MonsterVerse, why not Atlantis, right? But comment below your guys' thoughts, and we'll see you guys later.